the chain of responsibility design pattern. This pattern is really useful for validating HTTP requests. So imagine that an HTTP request is sent into our application. Well, before it actually hits our application and our application executes, we usually have a layer of validation, right? And the validation needs to validate on the request or the HTTP request. And then we allow it to hit our application and then our application continues or executes the actual behavior we want for a given user. So one of the hardest things to do with validation is set it up so it's extensible, expandable, and easily replaceable, right? So how do we set up multiple validators that just check for something, abort or throw an exception if that validation fails, otherwise hand it off to whatever other validator we have. Well, this is where the chain of responsibility design pattern comes in. Uh, middleware is a great example of this pattern. So to start off with, we're going to create a user class. And we're actually going to simplify this. And we're going to validate a user. So public ID is going to equal one. Public name is going to equal Zach. And public email is going to equal Zach at cleancode.studio. Next, we need to create this abstract class. We're going to call this check user. And the reason we're making it abstract is because we're going to extend any number of classes from our check user that are each responsible for checking or validating something on our user object. So this is abstract because we don't know exactly how each of those classes is going to implement it. So we cannot directly instantiate this abstract check user class. In fact, we're actually going to add a public abstract function check. And this check is going to accept an instance of our user class. So this class is responsible for more than just checking the user. It's responsible for checking the user, throwing an exception, slash validating the user, throwing an exception if the validation fails, otherwise handing off the user to the next check user validator or the next chain in the link. So we have the check right now. Next, we need to define the next check, right? So we're going to create a property called next check. Next check is actually going to be an instance of check user. And so we're going to add this function, public function, then check user check. And all we're going to do is this next check equals that check. Now this one's a little weird at first because this function actually accepts an instance of its own class. But that is exactly what it's supposed to do. Because this is the validator, we'll define this in the child classes. The check function will override that or define specific instances or implementations of that check method in the child classes. This then function, however, will actually be used by or around the time when we instantiate all of the children of this class. And we'll get into that part later. The final method we need to actually add is the next function. So we want to add a public function next, and it is also going to accept an instance of our user. And this is going to be responsible for utilizing the next check and then checking the user. So this will actually get the next check and then check the user. And our check function will actually be responsible for executing this next user. So 
let's get into actually defining the children classes. We're going to define three altogether. The first one is going to be check ID. Of course, that is going to extend the check user class. It's only going to have one function, and that is the check user function. We're going to keep this really simple. So we're just going to say if no user ID, if the user ID doesn't exist, throw new exception, user ID not found, and then abort. Just like that. Otherwise, if the user ID does exist, we want to simply trigger the next check on our user. Okay. So let's create this two more times and we're going to add a check name. We're just going to change name here and name here and then check email and change email here and email here. Sweet. Okay. So, so far we have our user class. We have our abstract class that is responsible for checking the user object for something and then handing off to the next check then check user using next right so the check actually triggers this next if validation passes and this next this next gets the next check right and then passes the user into it so the one thing we haven't actually implemented yet is we need to define then. So here's how this will work. We say user equals new user. We're going to say check ID equals new check ID. And we're going to do check email. Check name. And then all we need to do is say check ID, then check name. Check name, then check email. And then finally, we need to trigger the chain by doing check ID and then check user, just like that. Now there's one last thing we need to do. Notice that check ID then passes off to check name. Check name then passes off to check email. Well, check email, it's the last one in the list, right? We don't hand it off to anything. There is no other middleware after that. So currently, if we scroll up to our check user abstract class, notice that then it doesn't take into account if there is no check user. So all we have to do is if no check return, just like that. So if we do have a check, then we will hand it off. Actually, sorry, I did that wrong. If no this next check return, just like that. So if we don't have a next check, if we never trigger this then method, if we don't have a next check, we're just going to return. Otherwise, we'll get the next check and run the check validator method on the user. So let's see if this works. Okay, we ran it. Good sign. We didn't get any output. That's exactly what we wanted. That means nothing failed, right? So let's go back down to our check ID. Well, what if we say, okay, no user ID. That's what we're checking for. Okay, let's not give it a user ID and let's rerun that. Uncaught exception. User ID not found. Abort. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So let's do this. Let's get rid of, or let's put that one back. Make sure that it still passes, and it does. And then we are going to test out the, let's test out the email. Let's skip the name and go straight to email. So when we run this, there we go. User email not found. Abort. Now check this out. If we get rid of the ID and we get rid of the email, both of these will fail, right? So 
What's cool about the chain of responsibility is user ID not found abort. User ID not found abort. Notice we never get to the email, right? Because when a validation fails in the chain of responsibility, it exits out of the application. It throws an error, an exception. It completely just gets out of the chain. It breaks the chain altogether. Hence, chain of responsibility. But what if we went down here and we said, okay, right now we're getting the check ID error, but we really want to validate email first. Well, let's do this. Check email, then check name, and then check name, then check ID. Let's reverse the loop. And then of course we have to do check email and pass in the user. So in the previous example, the ID is what failed because the ID originally came first. We did check ID, then check name, check name, then check email. Well, now we're saying check email, then check name, check name, then check ID, and then we trigger the email check. So we should see the email error this time. Uncaught exception. User email not found. Abort. So that worked exactly how we wanted. So guys, that is the chain of responsibility design pattern. I wanted to go over this pattern because I am about to get into a Laravel, um, basically full on authorization uh, series. I've got some stuff I got to do at work in the, in the day job where I've got to create a whole bunch of user roles, permissions, groups, and I want to cover within Laravel middleware which actually uses something very similar to this chain of responsibility design pattern uh, Laravel gates Laravel policies and then adding permissions within Laravel so guys I hope that was helpful um, if you learned something new today like and subscribe and uh, give this thing a thumbs up and a, and a like and hit that subscribe and bell if you feel like it guys I appreciate you and this is Zachary Warren with Clean Code Studio Clean Code Life. Separate life.